chapter two. Chapter two is called entitled derivatives. As you might remember when I introduced the course, there are two main branches of calculus. We have uh, differential uh, calculus. Oops. And we have integral calculus. Those are the two main branches. And the differential calculus is all based on something called the derivative. Okay? So, I know this isn't the root. It's not differential, but it's differential. Um, but the derivative is a huge part of calculus. It sort of represents half of, um, of what calculus represents. Now, the good thing is, and I did mention this last chapter, that the derivative is really nothing new. Chapter 1 was all about finding the derivative for a function, whether that function represented, you know, a falling rock or represented the motion of something. We calculated instantaneous rate of change and the slope of the tangent line to a curve or a function. And so the derivative is just the name that's now given to the, this instantaneous rate of change, so we use limits to calculate that, the slope of the tangent to a curve at a specific point. So that's what a derivative really is. So it's just a new name to, to the limit that we have been finding in chapter 1. Okay. So again, chapter 1, we use limits to calculate these values. And remember, we had two formulas that we, uh, that we would commonly use. In chapter 2, though, and I had mentioned this before, that we're going to learn some new shortcuts to this process. So that's sort of what chapter 2 is about. It's about the derivative, and it's about finding the derivative to some more complicated functions a little bit easier. Okay? Because when we used our uh, formulas in chapter 1, we were limited to kind of the, some of the more simpler functions that we found the derivative for, or found the rate of change for. So... <clears throat> Something else I need to talk to you about here is this notation bit, okay? So now that we've called this a derivative, we have a special notation. So the notation for the derivative of a function f, or f of x, whatever, at point a is written like this now. And this is f prime of A. Okay, so that's how you would say that. F prime of A. The derivative of A. And this is a little prime notation. Just a little, it's not an apostrophe like in English, but it's just a little tick, a little prime notation. Okay? Um, F prime. So if I refer to just F prime, that's what I'm talking about, the derivative of the function. F prime. So the prime sort of signifies the derivative. Uh, if we're talking about f of, uh, the function f of x, and I might as well just write this, um, the, the function f of x, the derivative is f prime of x. Okay. So, uh, let's say we have f of x is x squared minus 3x. And we're going to go back to chapter 1 here for a moment. We're going to be still using the uh, limits because that's actually the actual the definition of a derivative is the limit. So what you've been doing in chapter 1 is still important. Um, it is actually the definition of a derivative. So if, we, if I ask you to calculate a derivative directly from its definition, I'm asking you to use that limit. So this limit right here that we have used, let's say we're going to use the uh, uh, the limit as h approaches 0. Okay? We now know that this is actually called the derivative. And this is what it is. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Okay? So the first thing is to understand that what we've been doing, chapter 1 right here, is actually finding or calculating.
calculating the derivative, instantaneous rate of change at a point. Capish? Got it? Okay. All right, so let's do it for this uh, function. Let's find the derivative. So we'll go back here, and the limit as h approaches 0. Now, a plus h. Now, I'm just going to find this function at, uh, at a, okay? Actually, let's change that. Let's find um, our expression is going to be, um, so a equals x. Instead of putting a in there, I'm going to actually just put x in there. Okay? So I'm going to, so when we have our final expression, it's going to have some x term in it. Okay? Whatever. Okay? We have an x term in it. So we're going to use x. So let's say this is, we'll just change it right here, f of x and, oh goodness. That eraser didn't work very well. X. So, x plus h. So I put that into the first function, right? Let's write this up. So that's going to be x plus h all squared minus 3 times x plus h. Everyone with me there so far? Minus f of x, which is just the expression or the function there. all over h. As we continue on, h approaches 0 here. Let's expand this out. That's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h minus x squared plus 3x all over h. Double check that. Okay, looks good. Now I'll gather like terms and I'll cancel anything out that I can. So let's see here. What do we have? Oh, we have x squared and negative x squared. That's gone. Anything else? Oh, 3x and negative 3x. Those are gone. And we'll, we'll write everything together. Notice we have all these terms that are left have h's in them. That is beautiful. Let's factor that h out here right away. 2x plus h minus 3, right? All over h. Now this h divides out with this h. And th you guys know this, right? This is easy. This is all chapter 1 here. And now we can go ahead and input 0. And we have this. Okay? That is the expression. And let's just call it what it is. F prime of x. Okay. So, we started here and we ended here. Okay, through that process. Yes, we're going to be looking at shortcuts. I'm going to show you some shortcuts. I'm going to get you to examine multiple functions here and their derivatives and to see if you can kind of piece together um, the, uh, the rules. Okay, or see if you can observe some um, similarities. So, I need to talk to you also about a function uh, being differentiable. You will see this word in your textbook. So copy this down here. A function is said to be differentiable at A if f prime of A actually exists. So if you can find the derivative at a point, then the function is differentiable at that point. So a function is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. A function is differentiable on an interval. Now when I say an interval, I'm talking about, you know, between a and b, or from this x value to this x value. And it's differentiable on the entire interval if it's differentiable at every number that's on that interval. And I'll tell you how to kind of uh, figure that out here in the next little bit of notes.
The example here says a derivative exists for all values of x for this function right here. Now, how would I know that? Well, if you look at this function right here, there are no um, restrictions on x, so that's a good thing. If there was any restrictions on x, then you think, well, okay, we might not be differentiable where the domain, you know, doesn't exist, right? Where the values for the domain that are restricted. And also the function is continuous. So when I say continuous, I mean that it's not a piecewise function, right? Uh, it's not like this. It doesn't jump or whatever. Uh, there, and there are some special exceptions that we'll talk about later, okay? I just don't want to get into them right now. But this is a parabola, right? So you should know that, hey, a parabola, you should be able to draw a tangent line at every point. So if you can, draw a tangent line at every point on, on the interval or on the graph, then it's differentiable. An obvious case would be, you know, where the domain is restricted. So if the domain is restricted for f of x, then it is all, the derivative is also restricted. Okay, on that part of the domain. So for example, for this function right here, the allowable x values for this function would be anything that's greater than or equal to negative 2. And that's because you can't have a negative number underneath the root sign and have a actual real number answer, right? So here, there's restrictions on the variable, and you can obviously see that. So if this is the stated domain of this function, then the function um, would not be differentiable um, on, well, therefore the function is, oh, I should have that wrong. The function is only differentiable. Let's get off this. Sorry, one second. Only. The function is only differentiable on, on this domain, so the stated domain. So anything less than negative 2, it would not be, but it's differentiable on this domain. And if you want to double check this on your graphing calculator, then you can go ahead. So if we graph this, this is the graph of uh, f of x equals root x plus 2. And you can see that the graph exists here from x equals negative 2 on, but not before that. So there's no, there's no actual graph here to draw a tangent line to. So, you know, it's not differentiable on this part of the domain. Okay? Make sense? If we talk about graphing the derivative, what I mean is I'm going to give you a function here. Okay? Let's say and this is a function. Okay? And this is f of x. And I'm asking you to graph f prime of x. And you know what? This is actually not that, it's not that hard at all. Um, notice I put sort of two horizontal axes on with the same vertical axis. And that's because what we want to do here is that any value for x that we choose, like this value for x right here, I just want to be able to place this directly, um, you know, underneath it so we can actually see. This will be easier for you to, to, to connect the graph with its derivative. So what is the derivative at this x value right here? We don't know what it is, but let's just say it's this x value right here. What is the value of the derivative at this point, at this x value? Looking at the graph right here, what's the value of the derivative there? Or if that's too much for you, let me rephrase it, because derivative is a brand new word for you. What is the slope of the tangent line to the graph at this x value? So here's the graph. What would be the slope of the tangent line to this point? Um, y equals negative 1. Okay, you so said y equals negative 1. Um, okay, my issue is that, is that with that is that you're looking, you're maybe looking at this y actual y value here. I am not looking for the y value that corresponds with the x value. I'm looking for the slope 
of the tangent line right there. What's the slope of the tangent line? Ah. Okay, that's better. Okay, if I were to draw a tangent line at this point, it would look something like this, wouldn't it? That would be my tangent line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. So the slope here of this line is zero. Does that make sense? Everyone see that? It's the tangent line. The slope of that tangent line looks to be zero. So guess what? The f prime down here, the derivative, I put zero. I put a point right there. Because the slope is zero, I put y equals zero. That's the value of the slope. Let's keep going. You'll, you'll see. Uh, up here, okay? So right here, at this x value right here, what's the slope of the tangent line here? Zero. Very good. So, if I just go down to the x value here, I'm going to put another point at zero. Let's move on. What about here? Thank you. Get in the picture. So that is zero. That's why I'm going to put a point there. Okay, so at these x values, the value of the slope is zero. Okay, what about right here? Okay, at this x value right here, what, was, what would be the value of the slope? of this tangent line, which would look yeah, pretty much like that. What would your guess be? Yeah, 1. That's what I tried to make it. So let's say that this is 1 right here. So guess what? You put a point right here. Okay. So at this x value, the derivative. Now again, I'm not talking about the function. I'm talking about the derivative, the slope of the derivative. Okay. What about... What about... Um, right here. Okay, there's the slope of the derivative, roughly. What would you say that would be? Bad, but yeah, it looks to be about negative 1. So guess what? If this is negative 1 here, right at this x value, negative 1. So do you see how we're kind of piecing that together? Um, m equals 1 here, so it's a value of 1 down here on this graph. This is m equals negative 1. And so I put negative 1 here. Okay? Now, if we if we kind of check this one, what about this x value? Well, it's a tangent line slope here. Maybe about there. That's going to be what? Between 0 and negative 1, right? So what would you guess? Maybe negative what? Negative half? Sure. Let's do that. So, negative one-half. Look, there's one-half, negative one-half. Okay. Okay. So, what we have here is we have... Now, if I were to fill in these blanks a little bit, um, right, uh, I'd have uh, something that was just barely above zero here, you know, right about here, so... Right, and then almost zero here, but just really, you know, up there... So you could fill in these blanks a little bit and stuff like that. So what you have is something like this. Oops. Okay. Now it just so happens that it's a coincidence that these kind of look similar, but I guess the point is is that this is the original function, and then this graph down here maps out on the y-axis the y equals f prime of x, right? the slope of the derivative of the point. Here's another quick example here. Here's the f prime of x. And um, if we're going to do that, it, it might be a good idea for you to kind of pick your zeros and ones. I think that would be a great idea if you know where the zeros and ones would be. The zeros are easy, right? So here's a zero right there, tangent line. We've got a tangent line here. So that's a zero. See what I'm doing? This is a zero too. Right there. There's another zero, right there. Zero slope, right there. See? Now, this one right here, oh, check this out. That's pretty steep. Now, if we were actually calculating the slope here, and let's just take a moment to do this, if you actually went, okay, so rise from this point to, let's say, this point, rise of one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you see those? The lines on my on the screen up there? Yeah, you can. Okay. So 6, a rise of 6. So the slope here is 6 over what? 1, 2.4, let's say. 
So it's 6 divided by 2.4. Whoa, 66, no nice. 2.5, awesome. 2.5. So this is a slope of 2.5. So guess what? If, if you can find the, the point of tangency here, let's say it's right here, right? So you go down here, and you go up, nope, not 1. Nope, not 2. 2.5. That's where you put your point. Make that blue like the other ones. Okay, pick it up and put it down there. Okay. So this one might be a, where's a, let's see here. That one looks like to be like a negative 1. So right here you got a negative 1. So that's just it. I mean, once you, this is a negative something down here. Okay, negative not so much here. All right. You kind of piece this together. You do a little bit more careful than I'm doing it right now, of course. But, uh, you know, one, one maybe. And so then eventually you'll have, you know, this graph that you'll be able to piece together like this. And it gets up there, back down to one there. It's a bit of a negative slope there, back to zero. Really high positive slope that's going up there. And then back down to zero. Okay, and then to one here. And then this actually is negative, like a lot. So, so you know, it goes goes down to a negative a lot. And, and so you kind of piece together your uh, the graph of the derivative. Okay. All right. So let's say I give you this as a function. Here's something totally different here. It, this will help me understand if you understand. If I give you the definition of the derivative here, right? This is f prime of, um, well, I'm just going to leave this blank, okay? It's, it's the derivative of something, right? So I am wondering, what is a, and what is the function? That's what I'm wondering. If I give you this and this alone, and this is sort of like, can you work backwards? If I give you the definition of the derivative, can you tell me what function and at what a value I'm looking for. Okay, anybody got any ideas what a might be? Look at the pattern here. This is h approaches zero. We've got h in the bottom. What normally do we put around this area right here? We put what into a function? a plus h. Yes, what do I have here? I, I see I have 4 plus h. So guess what? a is 4. A is 4. Yes. Very good. Now, what is the function? So, if A is 4 and this is A plus H, what is the original function? Sorry? Root A, okay, or square root of X. Yeah, F of X is the square root of X. Now, remember, this must be um, F of A. Right? So that must be f of 4, which would be the square root of 4, and that equals 2, right? So that's that's good. Yeah. So a is 4, because here's 4 in place of a. And if you look at this function as a whole, you would have square root of a plus h. Well, that's a plus h right here, so that's going to be x. So root x is your function. Okay? Another one. So tell me what a is and what f of x is. First thing you want to notice is, look at this part right here, x approaches 1. This was h approaches 0. So this is formula number 2. This is formula number 1, right, from chapter 1. And so what's a? It is, it's 1. What is f of x? Hmm. This would be, this is, remember, f of x minus f of so what's f of x? x to the fifth. Because it's f of x minus f of a. Now does this make sense? f of 1. 1 to the power of 5. What is that? 1. So here's your function. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay, so here's your assignment from 2.1. Um, again, 
just talking about uh, the definition of what a derivative is, those limits that we were talking about, graphing, and um, yeah, actually using the notation to figure out what we need.